gentlemen, I present to you now something the likes of which you've never seen before. The most dangerous combination of professional sports. The skill, the strength, the stamina, and the ability of two men blended together as one. The most exciting combination in the history of professional wrestling. Twin sons of different mothers. Chris Adams. And Mike Currents. Let body slam. Competition. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us for Body Slam the Competition. Episode 27 is now under our belts this week. That's right, the big 2-7. And this week we've got a little bit of wrestling to talk about with the Lucha Underground. And we're also going to cover the uh, Payback. Was it Payback? It is Payback. Payback, I believe, yes. the uh, pay About 350. Payback is one of the... Uh, of the pay-per-view, I want my 9.99 back. No, uh, it was a pretty good, uh, actually a pretty good pay-per-view. I was fairly happy with it overall. Uh, we'll touch on that a little bit more here soon on what we did and didn't like about it. But right now, what we want to start off with, because as we told you last week, we're going to be covering different things, different weeks. Uh, Mike Currents has got some stuff for Lucha Underground this week for us to tell us about. So, Mike, if you will, I'll take it from here and tell us about some Lucha Underground uh, school us for the week. No problem, Chris. People, please bear with me. I've had a little bit of a cold, and the only thing keeping me going right now is that plop, plop, fizz, fizz of Alka-Seltzer. Because you know, nothing, you know, calms a cold quite like Alka-Seltzer. If only they were a sponsor now. Well, I'm trying here. I mean, I really do like Alka-Seltzer, but send me some free shit, Alka-Seltzer. Come on. Hmm. But anyway, so I actually, actually sat down and watched Lucha Underground this week, and it was absolutely terrific. If you do not watch Lucha Underground, go online, find somewhere to watch it. If you don't get the L-Ray Network like I do, there's multiple places online that you can pick this thing up. They had two matches in an hour, Chris. Two. The first one was the end of the trios tournament, which is their tag team division. Okay. They don't have like a two-man tag. It's all trios. And you wanted to talk about a high-flying, just awesome match. It was Ray, the Rey Mysterio's team. It was him, uh, Pentagon... Junior and uh, Prince Puma against a Son of Havoc. I forget what the chick's name was now, and some other dude. I don't remember their names. Their names are so out there. It's hard for Honky Mike to remember them because they got all these unique names like Drago and um, Arrow, Super Arrow Star, and all this. I don't know. All I think about is the old Ford van, you know, the old Arrow Star. <laughs> but it was a it was great. You are going to see stuff that you have not seen anywhere for a long time. Um, it wound up uh, Ray Mysterio's Team 1, New Trio's Champions. It was a really excellent match. And then we go on to the main event, which is the only other match of the night. Now, a whole hour show, Chris. Two matches. Now, was the first match real long? Did it take uh, it, like a long, yes. like a 30-minute match or something? It was probably close to 20, 20, 20, 20 uh, and 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 uh, Okay, Mike, are you there? Because you kind of, uh, your uh, screen yeah. froze up a little bit and your voice went all yeah. robotic for a second, so. A lot more theatrical. All right, if, if you can, uh, hey, uh, if you do me a favor and repeat that last part about the match, you kind of went off, uh, went out for a second. The storm got you. Yeah, I'm having a little uh, bad weather here, Chris. But, um, yeah, the match was about 20, 25 minutes. And, uh,. <clears throat> Then we had a little bit of backstage segment, and uh, the Lucha backstage segments are a little more theatrical than what you are used to seeing on really any other, even New Japan. I mean, yeah, they go back and they talk. It's kind of an old school feel in New Japan, and WWE's sort of like in between, but this is like full on. They got music. They got sound effects. They got, and so we go back and we see John Morrison, or excuse me, Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. And uh, he's back there with uh, Taya, Taya, Taya Valkyrie, I mm -hmm. do believe. Right. And uh, he's preparing for a match with uh, the Machine Cage. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Cage wrestle before, Chris, but this guy's impressive. He's six foot one, two hundred and eighty pounds. He's he's built he's built like a like a machine. I mean, the dude looks like he's chiseled out of stone. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be fighting Johnny Mundo in a steel cage. And it's old school steel cage. So escape, pin, or submission. 
Okay. And it was an absolute barn burner of a match. You had outside interference uh, from Ty Valkyrie. She's sticking kendo sticks inside of the cage. She's climbing up the cage with a chair, throwing Johnny Mundo chairs. And uh, the machine cage at the end comes out on top. But what a great match. It was probably the best wrestling I have seen all week long. I have heard nothing but good things about Lucha Underground. And uh, you mentioned earlier, for those who don't have El Rey, like I do not, I have to go online to get it when I do. And I have seen some of their shows in the past, but it's been a while. Uh, I find it hard to find the time really to get time to really, st- you know, to to stream these things. Uh, I get to see Ring of Honor more than anything else uh, when I well, go stream it. But it, it, I don't always get the time to see NXT and then Lucha and... Um, I'd like to make a suggestion to you, Chris. You watch Monday Night Raw on a regular basis. I know you do. Right. Because yeah, that's what we do. Instead of watching the first 45 minutes or an hour of Monday Night Raw, go watch Lucha Underground. Take that time. Watch that episode of Lucha. And it'll probably become your your go-to. Because, honestly, the first 45 minutes to an hour of Raw, nothing happens anyway. Well, they come out, see, they talk, they pee a little. The problem... See you can pee the farthest. The problem with that, yes, and they see that usually the peeing contest is between Stephanie and somebody else, but but the, the problem with getting that first hour or even watching Raw in general for me is I work every Monday night. And as we discussed earlier about my schedule we were talking about, my schedule is up here one week and it's like it's, it's changing all the time. I never can get a solid schedule. So what I end up having to do is to record Raw and go back and watch it later on uh, the DVR or something. So that's how I get to watch Raw the majority of the time. And I just fast forward through what I don't want to watch and take note of it. And, uh, you know, through the commercials, of course. Now, if only so the you same watch Raw like I watch Raw. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, if, if you're something good, if they got Cesaro, I pay close attention to Cesaro. He's one of my favorites that are out there. You know that. Um, I like watching Sami Zahn. He puts on good matches. I mean, <clears> El Generico. Uh, I'm sorry. El Generico. Uh, yeah, I, they, they, Enzo and Cass, even though we have an issue tonight with Enzo, we'll talk, we'll talk about here in a few minutes. I like watching them come out. I like watching the, you got me watching the New Day now. I can't help but watch the New Day when they come on. Man, I pay attention to them. That's uh, right. They come out there with those horn, it, unicorn horns you know, and their bootio shirts. You cannot style. There's some things I don't really care to hear. I don't want to listen to Stephanie talk when she comes out there. Her her voice annoys me. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched Friends before. If anybody out there listening ever watched you know Friends on TV, but there was a character they called Janice. And she was somebody that would date Chandler Bing every now and then. And she had the most annoying voice and laugh that would make you think fingers down the chalkboard bad. And you just, and that's Stephanie McMahon to me. I don't want to listen to her talk. I really don't. So I turn the TV down and either look at her or I fast forward through it. And let that be it. Um, I would, I, if I had El Rey, I could record Lucha Underground and do the same thing. But I just don't have that ability. And Ring of Honor... Um, I, it comes on. I want to say Saturdays, I believe, isn't it? Or Fridays. I have no idea. I don't get Ring of Honor. So. Um, well, it's it, usually you can find it on a Fox channel um, in the area that you're in. Now, back home it was on a Fox channel. There, uh, here I haven't found it on TV yet. Here, that's why I stream it. Um, but um, I do I do try to stream them first before Lucha Underground because I have uh, time invested in it and keeping up with it over the last year off and on. So I'm more apt to keep up with that than I am Lucha Underground, but I would like to try Lucha Underground and consistently watch New Japan. The problem is, hell, we got to make a living and work. I don't have time to watch everything and still work. So I can't get – I've tried to watch New Japan. And it doesn't hold my interest because of the fact that it's such a delay. It's a year old, basically. Uh, but and, and then the names. you know, The names throw you off a little bit. and It's hard to cheer for somebody you can't pronounce – the name of yeah, the you times. got uh, Tamayato Himachio versus Ble- Yamagato Tamachio, and you're like, who's who? Bless you. Which Achio is it? Uh-huh. Now, okay, now I'm a racist, and we're never going to have anybody from New Japan. Great. Right? Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Now, I was going to get Nakamura, <laughs> but not anymore. Now, 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 wait a minute. Sisuke Nakamura, now that is a name that you can... Uh, mm-hmm. Have you seen any other Nakamuras? I haven't. I, I have not, no. And we did so, but back to uh, the whole lucha thing. Uh, to make sure, did we did we cover everything on there? Was that that's the show? That's it. I mean, uh, that, that's it. The previous episode, there were they had had a match for the world championship that ended in a stalemate when uh, 
I forget the names. That's another one. I have a horrible time. There are two guys in masks, both monstrous kind of gimmicks, and they wound up doing a move and going through the boss man's office roof. Oof. And ended on that note. And I don't uh, know if that sounds exciting or kind of rough. It was a little bit of both. Rough and exciting. Kind of like Saturday Night in Las Vegas. Wow. All right, well... Uh... For those listening, that's Lucha Underground in a nutshell right there for this week, I guess. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next no week, problem. maybe we'll get a chance to cover some Ring of Honor and NXT to go along with Raw uh, and what happened in WWE for the week. But uh, we're not going to really talk about Raw this week. We're going to cover Payback. Uh, Payback right. was earlier tonight, and we watched it, and it was what I thought was one of the better pay-per-views they've had in a while, Mike. Um, the Even the what I like to call the dark show there, the preview show, uh, the, the matches they had there was not that bad this time. No. They had uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin as one of the as uh, the first match, I believe it was, and they put on a great match between the two. And I know that I I recently linked a message or linked a a uh, article on our Facebook page about Jim Cornette talking about how WWE is really misusing Ziggler, and that because it's one of his favorite wrestlers on the on the roster there. Uh, but I mean it, and I, I said last week that I didn't think Ziggler should be facing Baron Corbin, and I don't. I still think he shouldn't be on a consistent basis. But they did put on a great match between the two of them tonight. I will say that it was good. And surprisingly, Ziggler wins. Ziggler I mean, gets a win. Yeah, usually he shows up, but, and he does the big J. Yeah, but here's then, the problem, though. His win came via roll up. All right, he had to do a he, he had to pull a quick roll up to get the win. None of his moves that would normally pin the person got a win for him. He had to do a quick sneak pin to catch the guy by surprise to get the victory. So that's like saying to Dolph Ziggler, "Hey, you were once a great guy with us, but you know your stuff's kind of weak now, and we're gonna let people kick out of everything. But if you're fast enough, you can roll them up pretty quick and get a win, and we'll let you have that one. But it don't look quite as good for you." And that's how I feel about that. I think they should not. I mean, if he he should pe- fight people who are closer to his size, where they can put on a good, fast-paced match, and those moves are still effective on those people. I mean, him and him and uh, El Generico himself, Sami Zayn would have a great match together. Him and Neville would have good matches together. Uh, it, people like that. Uh, Ryback. They had Ryback on their previous show versus Callisto for the U.S. title. And uh, what was it you said earlier? He he must not be too hungry. They can't feed him much more because he lost to Callisto. Man, it's like the appetizer tapping out after the appetizer. I I, w- I want to cover something here. I talked to the to um our good buddy Teeters earlier. Jeff throws IQ. For those of you who don't know, uh, uh, Jeff Teeters, the IQ we call him. Uh, we're gonna have him on the show one day soon. You'll get a better idea of what kind of man that. IQ is. He has his own uh, blog as well, and I um, can't think of the name of his top of my head, or I'd plug it for him right now. Um, it Don't is ask a, me. I can't remember my own damn I would name. Have, I can't remember ours most of the time. I want to look it up, Jeff. I'm sorry. But uh, we were talking, and he said that, um, and I agree with him, the U.S. title has no meaning to it right now. The there. fact that you let Callisto hold that U.S. title for so long, and you don't let someone... Um, of a, of, a, of a bigger stature right now hold that title is not saying much for your belt and in the past you've had people hold that belt like Stan the Larry Hanson uh, Michael Hayes has had it Sting has had it I think Luger's had it a lot of big name people in the past well, have held be, that US title John Cena let's be honest that was a different era different time a different company a different title it, it may still have the same name but it's not the same title Chris you but know they that still, well they still hold it with some sort of um prestige to it in the company. I mean, the, they talk about it all the time as the U.S. title being a prestigious belt, especially when, when it was on Cena's waist. Between him and Owens going back and forth. And we were, Cena, Cena would have the open U.S. title challenge. They talked about it being the title next to the world title. Whereas it used to be the Intercontinental belt was the big belt. Well, you know why title. it's the title next to the world title? Because it was hanging on John Cena. That's probably the case. But then they turned around and put it on Alberto Del Rio and it was still the top belt. Uh, when uh, did, Didn't Rusev have it for a minute as well? Yep, yeah, for just you a know, second. It was still a top belt. It's been a top it's, it's been a top belt really no matter who's had it. They still consider it to be one of the, you know, right up here next next to the world title. And for some reason, the IC belts drop down to here now. It's mediocre. And I say it's mediocre because the freaking Miz has the belt. All right, the Miz, who has been... Uh, what filler time 
for the most part for the last two, three, five years, decade maybe. I'd say it's closer to a decade, Chris. Uh, it, but yeah. it, at one point, they gave him a decent push when he came out, and they had a whole lot of other people there. He had some decent push time. He was a world heavyweight champion there. Uh, now these days, he's more just someone to fill a slot for you when you need one. Well, and, and you know, I mean, that that was the nature of the beast back then. I mean, think about it. The WWE was so bad off at one time that the Miz was a world heavyweight champion. Now, think the about it. You had, the, you had the Miz. You had Jack Swagger was a champion at one point in time. That in that frame too. I, I like, like Swagger. I do too. I think Swagger. I think Swagger. Is great world champion material. I, I like but him as well. And where I the think, heck did he go? Well, you know, he did he did issue with the marijuana that caught up with him a couple. He failed a couple of drug tests, and he basically worked himself out of the show, worked himself out of the limelight. Oh, and just got, a little bit of reefer. The, I mean, he got put to the back burner. Well, you know, a little bit of reefer in sports today, whether it's sports entertainment, entertainment, or whether it's the NFL. Or the the the, the NBA. Did, did you watch? Are you a football fan? Did you watch the NFL draft here recently? No. Well, we're getting off topic here. I know, but there's a young man, offensive lineman from Ole Miss, who was predicted a number one, two, or three pick earlier in the year. He dropped all the way to the, I want to say, 13th or 14th pick to the Miami Dolphins because there's a picture of him on his Twitter page wearing a mask and hitting a bong. And he owned up to it being him. Someone else put it up on there. He didn't put it there, but someone else put it there. That cost him probably seven or eight million dollars right off the bat because of um, that. So, hey, Rob Van Dam probably made countless millions of dollars on Reefer, but, but you know, he I, now got Rob Van Dam is not going to come on the show. Well, Rob Van Dam never got suspended for it either, though, if you notice. That's well, not that we know of anyway. Yeah, true. So, uh, but back to, since we're getting off track here, back to the thing a little bit here. Uh, the U.S. title, I mean, I agree with Teeters. we got to put them somewhere again to where it means something on somebody. I right. mean, I don't care if it goes to, it can go to Rusev again. I don't even care. Put it no, on no, someone no, that's it, big. It can't. They've got to put it on somebody that's hot. They can't just put it on Rusev. He's not hot enough right now. You've got you to gotta stick it on somebody like Cesaro. There is somebody that deserves a belt, that but needs see, a belt. But see, Cesaro is in the battle for the IC belt right now, and they're not going to change that storyline up for the moment. Right. we got to think of somebody other than Cesaro for this point. we got to look at someone like, uh, and, and see, for the IC belt now, you got Miz, Owens, Zahn, and uh, Cesaro. Well, you know what a great idea would be, Chris, and I know they're not going to do this because it would, it would be a great idea, and we know how WWE's great ideas. But there's been that talk of Finn Balor coming up from NXT. Right. I mean, what if he comes up, wins that belt in the come up? Finn Balor would be a good choice. AJ then Styles he, would be a good choice as far as that goes. Not now. Well, I mean, not, not now. right now because of his thing with Reigns. But, I mean, Finn Balor coming up would be a good choice to put that belt on as well, no doubt. For but see, Styles, like Styles has skipped over it, though. He has skipped over it. He has had a world championship title match. I mean, you can't, he, he can't go backwards right now. Because if he does, it's going to be... I mean, it would be suicide. In my mind, it would be suicide. What about Ambrose, U.S. champion? I could dig that. I could dig Ambrose as U.S. champion. Ambrose could carry that right now. He's very popular. He's big. He's getting the push again. Well, he's never been without a push. It's just that he's, but the been, problem, he's been over without a belt. It's the thing. Right. He's, he's never had to have a belt to be over with the fans. But it would mean something to the fans who like him if he did get to hold something for a while like that. But then you got the problem of, well, here's Kalisto, who's, you know, not a heel. And then you got Ambrose, who's not a heel, but not really a face either. Ambrose is one of those ambiguous characters, really. He's almost, uh, I know we always make the comparison of, of Ambrose and uh, Brian Pillman when he was at Loose Cannon. And uh, it's a great comparison, but when Pillman was Loose Cannon, he was definitely more toward the uh, heel side. Right. Um, of things but in this aspect Ambrose favors Stone Cold Steve Austin and the fact that he really rides the middle he right. could go and either way he, right. any, any moment he could break and go either direction well, but he, he would still be over he could fight fans. he could fight Callisto and still be over with the fans be the fan favorite in the match and win right. and still be the fan favorite and Callisto right. would just be without his title if he lost right. and they're back to facing you know focusing on Lucha Dragons again nothing wrong with that I don't see why you have a, a singles title belt on half of a tag team anyway. That's never made any sense to me whatsoever. Not until you get a faction going. Uh, still, though, you know, I mean, I don't... 
You got you come on, man. You got you got three or four guys running for all the gold. Somebody's gonna be you holding know, up. Spe else. Speaking of a faction, there's a big faction breaking up. Now, has there has there not been? We had uh, Wade Barrett kicked out. Rusev, I understand, walked out of the League of Nations the other day on SmackDown, waving him off and left. He was gone. He wanted nothing to do with it no more. That leaves you with Del Rio and Sheamus now. Are they going to be a tag team? Are they going to stay League of Nations? I mean, add more people to it. What do you think about that? I think you should just change the name to Chicken Tacos. Chicken Tacos. Because you got the Red Rooster and, you know, the greatest uh, export from Mexico, Alberta. I really think Del Rio just needs to be done. Del Rio is an awesome uh, wrestler. Mm -hmm. I really like watching Del Rio wrestle. He can talk on the microphone. I mean, you know, the accents may be a little bit difficult for some people, but he's good on the microphone. He's charismatic. He gets in the ring and he does his thing. And it's really like poetry to me to he, watch he, Alberta. He, he, can, he can still be a heel. They can just break him up and put him back to solo matches again. They don't have to be together. But I, it was a great concept. It was a really great concept, but they just kind of deflated the whole thing. They don't do anything. Hell, social outcasts are more over than the League of Nations are and right as, now. As funny as that is, they are. They truly are. It truly is. I mean, um, honestly, uh, I think that people would cheer Heath Slater more than they would any single person in the League of Nations right now. Well, I, I would, because Heath Slater is kind of, he, he, he's fun. I mean, now, oh, yeah. I don't care for Bo Dallas still. I don't like that look. He's just a skinny, well, I, skinny little runt. And he has uh, no 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 purpose being there. And then this stupid thing of doing the bow train. Come on, let's stop in the middle of our match. We're doing good, and let's do the bow train. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, get off the bow train. Bring bring back the hoe train. That's what I'm saying. There you go. Because pimping ain't easy. Pimping ain't easy, yo. All right, well, let's go back here to the uh, start of payback. First match of payback. I was excited. Because, oh man, I man, was ecstatic because you know you hear that all well, and you know what's going they, on. They they came out, they, they came, came out, down. they talked a little bit, they introduced them, they showed a box of bootios, they had on their red jumpsuits with the blue the bootio shirts on had underneath. The, the and corn horn going on. Corn horns. They had some pizza, some drinks, some snacks to eat while they watched this tag match, the number one number one title uh the number one contender tag match is starting. Uh so they go have their seat out to the side and then we hear Enzo and Big Cass come out. Man, the place they, erupts too. They I do. Mean, they do. Man, the energy is so I mean, flowing in that you arena. Could, I, I wasn't in the arena, but the, air, the the hairs of my arms were standing up, and I wasn't even the, there. The hairs on Enzo's head were standing up too. Did you wow. see that man? What a hair! I tell you, it just made me envious. I'm telling, um, yeah, me too. Uh, but then they get there, and then the Vaude villains come out, and of course, like you said, everything just it's like they sucked all the good feeling out of the yeah. room. Yeah, everybody was um, starting to go to the concession stand, get a hot dog, and some peanuts. Now, the, the thing of the match is, it starts out pretty, pretty good pace. I thought it was it was doing well. Right. Um, I I don't know what happened exactly. I don't. I'm trying to figure out, Mike, and I don't know if you saw the video yet or not of what, what I, happened. I with did. Him. I did. I, okay. I saw it happen. So, so help me out here. I mean, was he supposed to go in the ropes and bounce off? Was he supposed to slide through the ropes in the bottom and go through the ropes like he was being thrown through the middle rope? What did he lose I, his footing and just fell down? I think. I think from my aspect and the way I saw it, it looked like that he was going for a slide out to the outside, to you know, a, a, a slick escape, and he just didn't pull back fast enough. I mean, his head. And, his head. I mean, I, I didn't right. he see caught, it in, 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 he, in regular speed, regular motion. But in slow, oh, in, was, in slow motion, they show his head hitting the second steel rope, steel cable there for the rope. Right. And hitting right about here and snapping his head back to the mat and catching the bottom rope on the way out and then hitting his head on the floor. It was like boom, boom, flop, boom. Exactly. He and, hit his head three times. And that first initial snapback was a real, I mean, it just... It's in the, it was it put a knot in my stomach when I saw it, Chris, because I saw his head and it looked like he had been dribbled by like a basketball by Shaq. It was bam. When I saw him on the ground at that point, oh yeah, my first thought was he looks like he cannot move because I'm for the people who did not watch tonight, uh, and you haven't quite seen the repeat yet. I mean, he's got his head just like side like this. His arms are out and his legs turned sideways. But it looks like he just he's just doing this. And it's like he can't move, it looks like. His arms literally cannot move. He's just laying there 
right. still as can be. And I thought my first thought was, oh my God, he done broke his neck. He's paralyzed. He can't move. And then his head starts moving a little bit and thinking, well, he's got some movement in his neck a little bit. One of the vault villains jumped down to grab him and the referee has to literally push him off and yell back off because it's legit going on. The guy didn't catch it at first. Uh, and you see in the background, you see Big Cass is like, you know, trying to ward him off. And so the guy backs off at that point. And then, and they, then they stop the match. They stop the match. They call. The, the you thing. see the referee. Anytime you see the referees doing this right here. You know, they're calling for legit help to But usually down. they try to salvage and get an outcome so that they don't have, but you know, you, you it, know, like... It depends on how bad cast. injury is. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, usually they, they still try, you know, no matter... Austin oh, broke his uh, neck in the ring. I'm sorry. No, what they could have done was continue two on one. Right. All right or they could have, or they could have just, you know, the ref could have given the hurry it up. You know, I, I have a feeling that the, this was supposed to be a win for the for Enzo and Big Cass. I have a feeling that's where we were heading with this. And yeah. Big Cass could have done a quick finish him up, couple big boots, couple you know power move, pin him, be done. But I think that they got really scared because it was scary. Like you had pointed out, Xavier Woods had a real look of uh, concern right. on his face. A true look of concern. I, I mean, his eyes were real intent and staring. He looked very serious. His man was like, oh, you know, is he okay? I mean, gosh, you know, I just want to go over there, but I can't because that'll break kayfabe or whatever you want to call it these days. I can't go over there, you know. Uh, but he looked like he wanted to get him walk over there, just like you wanted to see uh, his partner go over there. But he stood back and watched from a distance and gave them the room they needed to do what they had to do to you know, get, get stuff handled. And they go and they cart him out on a stretcher. He's not moving on the stretchers. He goes out. Uh, they didn't stop the match. I'm, I'm assuming the match went to the Vault Villains at that point because they couldn't continue. I don't know. I, I, they didn't I, I announce never heard, a winner. I think they just stopped I never, the match. You know what? I never heard a clear-cut winner. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we had one. I, I'm let, let me check on that really quick and see if we got a winner of that at all because that was something right there to see the way that it ended. Um... So they got uh, their telecom right here. Uh, they're showing a little Twitter post how this is a mad scene down here. Enzo can move his hands, getting loaded up and getting oxygen. Um, referee stops the match. Medical personnel attend to the injured. Uh, definitely a legit injury for Enzo. Match was called off. So it looks like the Vault Villains will be the official winners, but this is a scary moment for Enzo. But they still never actually announced that I a heard. Winner. I never actually heard them announce a winner, so nope. I can't say for sure. Nope. Uh, we'll probably find out more tomorrow on Monday Night Raw if they if, if they were actually the winners for sure because right now it's just hard to we can only assume that right. match had to have a winner and since Big Cass and Enzo couldn't carry on they announced the Vault Villains as the winners for the number one contenders and you know what happens when we assume Chris that's true so we don't want to assume too much but uh, you know we just don't know what to say for certain on it. Your, your next match after that was uh, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, and that was a great match. You said you didn't get to see that one, right? I didn't get to see that one. I, I saw the pre-show, the first match, and the main event. I had a little family issue to attend to in between, and I just couldn't get you know, back to see it in time. Well, but... picture any other Sami Zayn-Kevin Owens confrontation and put it in a full-blown matchup, and as you got there, that in a nutshell. But it was a good put. It was a very, very well put together match. A lot of uh, going back and forth. At one point, you think Zahn's just had enough and can't go no more, and then he just suddenly just opens up a can, and him and Owens are just exchanging punches right and left, right and oh. left, just exchanging, uh, and a clothesline out of nowhere. And then uh, looks like uh, uh, Owens is going to do that same power bomb onto the the side of the ring that caused him the injury the first time. And uh, um, Zahn ends up reversing and backflipping him, him landing on his back instead um, on there. It come close, looking like you might see Sami Zahn pull it off, and Kevin Owens ends up getting that pop-up power bomb instead and gets the victory. And then he roughhouses him and throws him out of the ring when he's done because he didn't have enough respect to get out of his ring. He was the winner. He makes by, um, What's the guy's name out there at the announcer's desk? Byron Cole? Or, no, it's Michael uh, Cole. Byron, Byron Saxton. Byron Saxton. Uh, yeah. makes Byron Saxon come up in the ring to interview him on the spot and you hear him and he's, he's, he's acting like he's whispering he's like he's like um, ask me how I felt about beating Zahn ask me how I felt 
you know, you can hear him playing his day. Uh, and he, he reworded it. He goes, well, that's not what I asked you, but here, give it to me. And he starts talking about how bad he beat him, which now he's coming for. Now he's going to refocus his um, attention on the IC belt and get his IC belt back that he never really lost. You know, he says he never lost. It was uh, said that, that that ladder match, and he didn't get pinned, so he wants his belt back. Uh, coincidentally, the next match on the card is the title match for the Intercontinental with the Miz Imagine versus Imagine that, Chris. So, um, whenever um, the guy tells him, well, you know, the next match is the Miz versus you know, Cesaro, what do you think? Will the Miz retain it? And he goes, what? Would I like to do commentary with you? Of course I would. Thank you for the invitation. And he goes over and sits down with him, and he's watching, and he's commentating the whole time, being just really, really obnoxious. You know how he is. Um, talking the whole time. Tries to wear JBL's cowboy hat. Finally gives that up. That's not working for him. But the match comes mm-hmm. on, and I don't care what JBL said. JBL said after the Sami Zayn and Owens match, someone called the cops. These kids just stole the show. No. The Cesaro and Miz was a better match than the Owens and Zayn match was. Well, of course, my, my opinion. Cesaro in it. My opinion. But Cesaro carried Miz quite a way through. And it was we a very, to. very excellent match. So a lot of strength in that match was, I mean, out of nowhere with stuff that he did. Uh, got the little, uh, what is he called, the swing he puts on him. Swung him it's around about, about 12, 15 times or something. I don't know. Well, he finally dropped him. Uh, uppercuts all throughout the match like crazy. I mean, just really, really. And then, uh, you know, I'm just here thinking, you know, I'm, I'm messaging back and forth to you and everybody else tonight while we're watching this. And I'm uh, messing into one guy, and we're like, you know, if Cesaro doesn't win, we're going to riot. And sure enough, he's got Miz in the, what I always call the cross, the Crippler Crossface, because that's what you know, Chris Benoit made famous. Whatever they call it now, I don't uh, know. Everybody's got a different name for it. But he has him in that. And out of nowhere, just as this starts happening, Zahn comes running back from the behind, from uh, the locker room and jumps on Owens at the announcer's desk. They're fighting outside the ring. They get up on the ring apron. They're going to make their way in the ring. The referee's trying to keep them from getting in. And as he's doing it, Miz is down there. He's tapping for dear life, wanting to get up. Make him stop. Make him stop. I, I quit. I quit. You know, the referee's not seen it. So Cesaro looks around like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm winning right here. You know, so he throws him down face first in the mat, goes over, knocks the other two off the ring apron, and is like, you know, I got a match here. I'm trying to win this. Next thing you know, he gets rolled up from behind real quick for a quick win. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is how you're going to end this match on a crappy way like that. So, of course, you know what they're building up to. They're going to the next pay per view. What will they have now, Mike? A fatal four way at Extreme way. Rules. Their favorite in three thing. Three weeks. Their favorite thing. Fatal Intercontinental four ways. title, Fatal Four Way. The Miz will retain because we're the WWE and we won't give you what you want. Cesaro with a belt. What is so bad about having a one-on-one match or a tag team match? Why do you gotta have a triple threat match, uh, a, a, a Fatal Four Way, a seven-man ladder match? Why do you gotta have all these things going on? The, the attention is not on you know the people it should be, and all kinds of crap is going on. It's not that great. Although the latter match, I'll admit, they had the pay-per-view where... Uh, well, it's okay for once in a while. Ooh, ooh, it's okay to the do belt. these things once in a while. Once in a while, yes. But come on, bring some of the old school stuff back. Let's have a freaking bull roll match, a Russian chain match. Let's have a, yeah. let's have a haircut. Let's have a haircut match. Yeah, with more cowbell. we got to have cowbell. i got uh, a fever. got a fever. And only prescription. It's more cowbell, baby. It's cowbell. Christopher Walken, all day long, he'll tell you. Yeah, I'm a hustler at heart, <laughs> but you know. Well, you know, my favorite, my favorite Christopher Walken skit, getting off subject, was uh, Colonel Angus Colonel on Lang- uh, Saturday Night Live. Colonel Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Call me by my given name, Enel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been so long, I you I forgot all about that. But uh, down there, an old shady thicket, looking for old Angus. <laughs> yes. Ah, we're awful people, I know. Now we'll never get Christopher Walken to come on the show. Well, he might want to come on the show now that he knows that we're fans. I mean, you know. Who knows? Mike, we're going to start a separate podcast, all right? We're going to do a separate podcast, and it's going to be about 
fun stuff and fun people, and we're going to get these fun people to come on like Christopher Walken, and we're going to talk about stuff like that. Let's make it happen. Mr. Walken, tell us about some cunnilingus from Saturday Night Live, if you would. Tell us about the time they had to knock at the back door of Shady Thicket. <laughs> tell us about how you just can't get enough cowbell. Yeah. Baby. Baby. So back back on track again. Hey, you uh, said Texas Bull Rope match. I mean, but, but for real though, I mean, think about it, man. Of all the old matches you got to watch, what do you? What are some of the matches you miss seeing? Strap matches, bull rope matches. Mm-hmm. Well, the two guys got the thing holding on to them. They can't get away. If they try to run through the ropes, guess what? I'm going to pull you right back through the ropes or I'm, I'm going to hang you over the rope. That's why I really enjoyed that Lucha Underground this week with the old school, it was an old school cage match. No Hell in a Cell, no, um, you know, new style, you know, uh, cage with the... I I remember watching USWA Wrestling or maybe in CWA Wrestling, it was Memphis Wrestling, whatever you want to call it, okay? It had several different titles. They had this like a Wheel of Death match, they called it, whatever. The people who had the matches that week had to come out there and spin the wheel, and that wheel, wherever it landed, was going to be their, um, their, their punishment if they lost. We'll say, on this wheel, uh, it may it was not necessarily your punishment, but it would tell you what kind of match it was going to be. I'm sorry, so because it, so, it applied to both people, so you would spin the wheel. It may come down to a strap match. That means one person's got the strap securely tightened on their wrist. The other person has it on their wrist. They can't get away from each other and run off to the dressing room. You are stuck fighting that person. There may be an, a, uh, a chain match where it's legal to use a chain on the hand to, to fight them. There may have been a, 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 a street brawl match where everything goes. It's an ECW hardcore match more or less, an average match in ECW. There may have been, a, I swear, I swear I'm not kidding you, a dog food match. A can of Alpo dog food. If you lost, they popped that can open in the ring. And Fred Peggs, if you're watching, I hope you are, got a big old spoonful of that Alpo and they had to eat it. It ain't like digging in your dog's bag and eating that beneful you had the other day. But <laughs> tell me you saw that, Mike. I didn't see that. You didn't see him? He's cutting no. a promo. He's cutting a promo and he's he's digging. You see this here? You see his bag of dog food? <laughs> I can eat this all night long. It's falling out of his mouth. I eat this all night long. Oh, my God. Well, you got to love Fred. I'm telling you, man. It's hilarious. Fred uh, is but hilarious. back to the thing, man. Uh, cage matches. Loser leaves town match. Mm-hmm. Um, a hair match. If you lose, you cut your hair right in the middle of the ring. I don't care. I mean, we get what about like this you know, no more. Even at the old casket match. When I was a kid growing up, nothing scared me as much as that Undertaker. Undertaker versus Kamala. But the, that was, that but was the, my first... First time I remember the casket match. But the casket match is generally for an Undertaker match. I mean, this is this is something right. you want that can be universal for anybody. And well, I would, I would stretcher love, match is basically I would love the same to thing. see. Okay, stretcher match. There you go, stretcher match. Uh, we have a stretcher match. It's not over until someone has to leave on a stretcher. They can't stand up no more. The same thing as a last man standing match, I guess. But all you to be carried out on the stretcher. Um, why not do uh, the, uh, uh, the? I would I would love to see a loser leave town match, because you know what's going to happen. The second the guy loses, he ain't going to really leave. Two weeks later, he'll be there with a mask on, and it's going to be hilarious. We've had this talk before. It's going to be obvious that it's him, and the person who, who beat him is going to be mad because he's supposed to be gone. I've already got this figured out. We could do the Loser Leaf Town match in the tag division, and we could have, when Primo and Epico come back, they could fight the New Day, lose, and then they could come back as Los Conquistadors. <laughs> Or Los Conquistadores. Uh, El Matadores. El Matadores. Well, that, they, they were no, those. Uh, no, no one likes you right now. You know that, right? <laughs> hey, there's maybe one person out there, perhaps, that finds me humorous, but I doubt it. Uh, Ambrose versus Jericho. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. Moving Ambrose on. versus Jericho. Now, been looking forward to this one, I'll admit, for a little bit now. Uh, they've been going back and forth a few weeks over the Ambrose Asylum versus Chris Jericho show where, if you remember, he was his last guest he had on his show. What was the show's name again he had? The Highlight Reel. The Highlight Reel. I bring to you With the, the guest Jeff of the Highlight Reel this week. The guest of, that's right, Y2J, myself. Drink it up, everybody. Drink it up. 
you know, everybody's like, oh, if I could be down there, it'd be like, we hate you. And then here comes Ambrose out there taking over the show. Uh, due to Shane McMahon, now your show's canceled, my show's out here. He's taking his show from him. He's taking his, his limelight from him. He's taking the spotlight from him at this point. Jericho never takes well the spotlight being taken off of him, right? He's right. The, one of the greatest of all times, he says. So now this sets up a big feud. Well, they had some mixed tag matches for a couple of weeks, individual, couple of individual matches. Now we're setting up for the big one here at the pay-per-view. And I fully expected Ambrose to once again job to somebody. It's usually how it works out. But, pleasantly surprised, Ambrose gets the win in this one over Y2J and uh, moves forward. So I'm glad to see that Amber, uh, that Jericho can still find it in his heart to put somebody over occasionally. Why he couldn't do it with AJ Styles is above and beyond me. Maybe it was too soon for Styles. I don't know. But it's crazy. Uh, Charlotte, we had Charlotte versus Natalia next. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched it, you'll be reading a lot of people saying Montreal Screwjob. Um, it's a little bit different to the Montreal Screwjob, obviously. For those of you who don't remember the Montreal Screwjob, where were you at? In a cave? I mean, it's like uh, Bret Hart losing to Shawn Michaels for the title real quick and getting mad and leaving and going WCW, spitting on Vince McMahon over the ropes. I don't see Natalya going to WCW right now since it don't exist. And quite frankly, there's no Ring of Honor women's division. And if she gets up and does this, <laughs> she's already lost because TNA. <laughs> Speaking of uh, TNA, what's up with this TNA invasion of sort in NXT recently? I know this is, uh, once again, we're getting well known for going off track, but it's still wrestling. We got Eric, um, Young. Eric Young. I, start Eric. I always want to, always want to call him Eric Embry. Um, Eric Young though, uh, making his debut on NXT now. So Bobby well, Roode's you know what, Chris? still in this, limbo. This is how it is. These people are getting hungry. They ain't been getting a paycheck now for probably, what, two or three months? That's I mean, about right. That's about he needs right. something to eat. I think you got some people who are trying to be loyal to him and trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, they may have some money put back that they're able, maybe they're well to do. They did well for themselves early on, and they're trying to give them benefit of the doubt. I don't know, but the ones who just can't afford to are moving on. Bobby Roode is in limbo with the NXT for a contract right now. I think they're negotiating. Uh, you got Eric Young starting there now. You've had uh, Austin Aries already in NXT. Um, Samoa Joe is in NXT. He's the champion right now. Uh, gosh, man, who's who else is gonna? Is, is Bobby Lashley on the way back, or is he gonna go to Ring of Honor? Is he gonna retire? Um, as far as I know, he's still uh, sticking loyal with TNA. Uh, Kurt Angle is. There's mixed things about him everywhere. Anything from retiring for good to making one last return to Raw to end I his would, career. I would love to see him make um, one last run in the in the WWE, but I just don't know that it'll ever happen. <laughs> But what are they going to do? Make it him versus Triple H again? One no, pass? I mean, they got to put a title on him. they got to come back and let him go out right. Because they made a joke out of Kurt Angle when he was there. He was the comic relief. It pissed me off because he was my favorite wrestler at the time. The little cowboy hat. Oh, my God. <laughs> they made him cry like he did at the Olympics. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, man, Chris. Yes, I'm telling yeah. you. And then he went to TNA, and all of a sudden, he was getting respect. He was a champion, and people were looking up to him, and these people were, and, and all of a sudden, the fans, it was complete, you know, there was no more you suck chance for Kurt Angle. Right. And the fans people, that saw people Kurt Angle didn't understand, when, to, when he went to TNA, TNA was not a sinking ship at the time. TNA had a future. TNA had a good roster. TNA they had, had Jeff Jarrett. They had Jeff Jarrett, thank you. They had a good roster. They had good... Uh, they had good behind the scenes stuff going on. Mm -hmm. uh, they they started to uh, get to the point to where they wanted to expand on stuff, and he brought in a partner. Now he bring in here come Dixie Carter, uh, buying in with it. Uh, her family's got money; they can pay big stars to come in. You know how'd that work out? You know. Yeah. Well, it, see, the problem was that they they brought in Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, and nobody and everybody's tired of Eric Bischoff. Nobody wants to see Eric Bischoff on television. Right now, and nobody also, wanted to see Hulk Hogan. Speaking of Jeff Jarrett, uh, we have Jeff Jarrett this Thursday. Uh, we're That's doing, right. We are doing an interview with Jeff Jarrett this Thursday from somewhere between thirty and forty minutes. They said we would get up to forty minutes of time. Uh, we are going to talk to Jeff Jarrett about Global Force Wrestling. We're going to get the lowdown on it. When are you coming on TV? 
Uh, where are you scheduled to be here soon? Are you coming to your our area soon? Can you give us a list? Is there a, a place online that talks about your your destinations that you're going soon so we can keep up with this? Because he was on our, our, our good friend Scott Middleton's show the other day, and I listened to it. And um, I actually had come on the show, and Scott asked him also when were they going to be on TV. There is a, a whole thing with TV about trying to get the right type of contract, the right channel, the right – everything's got to be right. You don't want to just settle for the first thing that's out there. Everything's got to be right. right. You so, don't want to be on pop TV. Right. So, I mean, they've got a champion. they got tag champions. They've got a good roster. they got people from everywhere. They've got people from South Africa, people from Germany, they got people from uh, from India. they got these these, these young tag uh, Last I heard, they had a young tag team. They're called the Bollywood Boys. That's a, a young Indian tag team. They said it had the same kind of a feel the Rock and Roll Express had when they were young and breaking in. All the girls loved them. They had a real good feel for each other as a tag team with their movements and everything. Uh, they have uh, the guy that was, uh, what was his name in NXT? He was a part of the um, whole thing where Wade Barrett was in the Nexus. Um, I think he's South African himself. Uh, last name was Black. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Oh, but man, uh, he, he, he was he's there. Uh, they've got some decent wrestlers there making a name for themselves and they're only going to bring in more so that would be something I would really I look forward to talk to him about this week I don't want to say what all we're going to ask him and give everything away but uh, it'll be a good interview for you guys to listen to uh, you will thoroughly enjoy it I'm sure because Jeff Jarrett is a great mind for wrestling and I look forward to some more good stuff from him coming out um, and also Mike on a side note you may not have heard this I read somewhere where there are talks with Ring of Honor and Dixie Carter right now. Talking about what? They're going to bury her with a shovel out back? Buying out the rest of her problem. That would mean uh, that would mean buying her roster, basically. Well, I think pretty much already half of the roster is Ring of Honor, so... Well, the way it used to be, yes. Yeah. So picture now, if Ring of Honor does do this, if they do make that combination, they're, not, they're still not going to rival WWE at this point. But they're going to have a... A more solid product you're going to have at that point you'd have the hardies you'd have lashley uh if if angle wants to make one more run and do it there he could do it there or choose to go to wwe or he has he has options a lot of them do but i mean it's up to them they could take the buyout and go to ring of honor compete over there with you know them boys everybody likes to play with them boys uh, you get the young bucks over there the the machine guns uh, I think they're called, or Motor City Machine Guns, something like that. I think that. they're just called the Machine Guns now. Machine Guns, okay. They got quite a great, great tag area, and, and, the, and the the solo, that they, they could use it under belt, I think, though. They got the TV title and the world title. Maybe they could use it. If they bring all these people over, one more belt might be you know necessary at that point. But anyway, that's being kicked around. So before I forgot that, uh, we've, we've covered everything so far for the payback except for Vince coming out to acknowledge what's going to happen with Raw and the main event so here we go with Vince now coming out to talk no one's really enjoying him out there they're booing him in order at first um, I, it, it, that's what he's good for right now to come on TV and get booed at this point that's what he's for uh, he's coming to announce who's going to take over Raw officially is it going to be Shane is it going to be Stephanie Stephanie comes down pleads her case says, you know, Shane McMahon come back after quitting on you for so long, he stabs you in the back, he tries to blackmail you, I've been here the whole time, only makes sense to come to me, Shane comes out and pleads his case and says, well, since we're talking about ourselves, let's uh, take a look at some of these headlines here from recent, and he shows headlines like BleacherReport.com, um, Fox Sport News, CBS News, all these places saying that WWS on the right track now, Shane McMahon's breathing new life into the product. All this good stuff about him. So now Vince is up there in the ring. He's looking at both of them and finally announces that it's going to take blood. He wants them slitting each other's throat. He wants to see who wants it more. As far as he's concerned, both of you are in charge. Figure it out. And walks out and leaves. So now we got both of them in charge of Raw. Not sure how that's going to work because they can't get along that well anyway. Um... Again, making no sense as to why the Undertaker lost at WrestleMania or won at WrestleMania. Could have been his last match. Could have been a way to go out. It would have been a spectacular way for him to go out. That elbow could have connected from off the cell, and he could have rode off into the sunset and and retired. 
or it could have been a different match without Shane McMahon involved. Yeah. They could have had somebody else, you know, they could have brought somebody else in for that match and gone from there. So, but that didn't happen either. But your last match of the night, Roman Reigns, the Roman Empire versus the phenomenal one himself, AJ Styles. What a match. And AJ shows what him why he is phenomenal. Yes, that was the absolute best Roman Reigns match ever, and it was solely because AJ Styles carried him through the entire thing. I said it, I'll say it again, AJ Styles carried him through the entire thing. Roman, I don't want you on the show, it doesn't matter, you wouldn't <laughs> say anything anyway, you just sit there and like, I'm not a bad guest, I'm not a good guest, I'm the, the guest. guest. <laughs> Watch out. Loading oh, up, oh, loading up. Oh. Uh, be careful, don't want that to go off on yourself or anything. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I always thought Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar from a couple of years ago was his best match he's had until I watched this one tonight. Oh, man. What a um, match. And this match, I mean, uh, God, I mean, can AJ Styles be any better? And I know people are, <laughs> there's people out there right now that are like, you know what? You're doing to AJ Styles what they did to Daniel Bryan, what they did to Roman Reigns. You're all up in his business right now, and six months from now, we're all going to hate him. You're going to be talking bad about him. I've yeah. watched AJ Styles since he come out in TNA Wrestling, and he was he was the man for a while there. I'm going to say I've watched it. him all this time, and he's always been a great person in the ring, a great I'm going to say it right now, Chris. You, mark, you, you listen, I'm saying it. AJ Styles is this generation's Shawn Michaels. More, more or less, and they try to say Seth Rollins is. No, but you know that's no. because Seth. That's because AJ Styles wasn't in WWE the whole time. That's right. You know, if but look at look at AJ Styles' career. Look what he's done in TNA. Look at who all he's beaten in TNA's past that they had there. Look who he's gone to Japan and beat consistently. Look at the club. I mean, look at the the, the the formation of the Bullet Club and how dominant that was. People talk about the NWO being dominant. They talk about DX being dominant. The Bullet Club was dominant. They beat people down on a weekly basis, and he was a champion. I'm going to tell you right now, if you have any doubts of the ability and the expertise and the talent of AJ Styles, go and find a replay of tonight's main event, and you will have no question anymore. Because he put it all out on the table. The athleticism. What about the fly, what about the phenomenal forearm off the top oh rope where he knocked him through the table? He knocked oh, him yeah. through the table. And then come right back with a four fifty splash and caught the knees in the guts. He took the Superman punch and kicked out of it. All dude, right? dude. Shooting star press springboard from the top rope. Mm -hmm. I mean not from the corner. He springboard from the apron off the top rope and did a shooting star press. Brock Lesnar tried to do a shooting star press twice. You know what happened? He wound up like a human pogo stick and he landed <laughs> on the top of his head. Uh, I'm only laughing because I can still see that video. <laughs> That's what it looked like. It, it did. It did. And like Kurt Angle just kind of like laying there looking one eye because one of them was a match with Kurt Angle. Yeah. And, and, like, and Kurt's like, is he dead? You can see that look. Kurt's like, is he dead? Should I roll over and pin him real quick and call yeah. it a match? What should yeah. I do? Uh, oh God, somebody tell me what to do. That's why he's now the beast and just throws people around because he that's, he's not built for flying. He no, finally, no, he finally no, no. figured it out. He's built for crashing. Um, but all right, here's how it turns out. This is why the match was so great. Not only was AJ Styles at like the peak up here of what he's done in the past. I mean, he's brought out the best of people in the past, himself included. And this was awesome. You get to where he does the flying form and knocks Roman to the table. Knows he can't beat him on a countout. Tries his best to pull that dead weight up and get him in the ring, and has to decide. With two seconds left, should I keep trying to pick up the dead weight or roll in and take the count-out victory? Does the smart thing. Rolls in, takes the count-out victory, but you can tell he's visibly upset because he knows he can't he get the title. But a win over the champion says something, and that gets you a rematch, if anything. Well, I'm upset at this point. I'm like, no. You can't end the match on this. How can you end the match at this? Well, hey, here, here come the money. Here oh, yeah. comes the money. Shane McMahon dollar, comes dollar. out. Dollar, he comes dollar. out. He says, hey, there is no way. There is no way payback is ending out like this on this note. He goes, referee, I want you to start the match back. Ring that bell. This is going to be a no count out match. Get him back in the ring. They start the match back up. AJ's looking at the ref. I mean, is this for real? Is he you starting back up? And they ring for the bell. 
He pulls Roman back in the ring. They start fighting a little bit more. Maybe five minutes goes by. AJ comes off that springboard off the top rope again. Roman goes to catch him with a big shot to the gut. Ends up getting a little bit lower. And the referee says he hits him in the nuts. And he yep. calls the match. He says, nope, disqualification. That's a low blow right in front of me. You can't do that. Ding, 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 ding. I'm like, oh. And then here comes Janice. Here I'm comes like, Janice out. Like, Are you kidding me? This is twice in a row AJ's won the match now. Once by count out, once by DQ. But he's still not getting the belt. You can't keep doing this. All right, well, here comes Stephanie. Like you said, Janice herself. Only left her to do is that little annoying laugh and ask where her little bingling is. If you haven't watched it, Mike, go look it up. <laughs> she now says there's no way that this is going to end like this my brother obviously sh shorted himself by saying as usual this is not just a no count out but also a no DQ match start the match back up so Roman's looking like I can't believe this now we're going to start back up again so it's no DQ match well now this opens this opens the door for what for Anderson and Gallows to come down that's right So and sure enough not too long afterwards they come down there because AJ gets hit with the second Superman punch. He kicks out of the first one. He gets hit with the second one, and Roman's setting up to do the uh, spear. As AJ goes to start to get up, the two guys pull him out of the ring. Roman's looking like, oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Here we go. It's a matter of time for you boys showed up. You know, they get in the ring. They fight. And what is that move called? Because oh, they man. put that boot in his head and dropped him on the ground. Yeah, I, I'm trying to... And remember it's rough i mean oh it's bad because it's, it's like it it's almost like they, they a reverse tko flapjack you know I, after the big boot it's awesome though. i don't know but it's like a combination of all kinds of goodness and just put roman reigns flat on the mat and they get out of the ring aj climbs back up in there tries to get the pin he kicks out well here come the usos down there fighting with gallows and um um the other guy and um, anderson and they start fighting. Now, I guess they fight their way to the back because I don't see any of them anymore now. No. Um, and uh, the match goes for just a little bit longer. And then uh, Styles is going to come off the top rope again and springboard. But that forearm, uh, Roman comes running at him, so he jumps over him and runs into the rope to the other side to come off of it and catches a spear. And there's the one, two, three, legit at this point. Roman Reigns wins. But it went that long with that much excitement to it. And AJ truly carried that match from beginning to end. It was really a really, really awesome match. Now, if that's what it, if they want to keep the belt on Roman Reigns, they're going to have to find people like AJ to fight him consistently and keep him relevant with that belt. Give him somebody else to talk for him. I, otherwise, I just don't see that belt staying with him too much longer. They're going to do nah. something. Like we mentioned earlier, the rumor of that Balor Club deal where if, the, if Finn Balor comes in and forms the Balor Club, maybe maybe they work it out where Finn Balor gets that belt on him and um, they help keep it on him by cheating for him all the time, by the you know, the, 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 all, all the muscle men coming in and keeping the belt around him. Uh, and then if that rumor that I read is true, uh, it would work well in the next summer pulling into a War Games match. Oh, you know, yeah. That, now, that would be... But to do the war games like Jeff, like Jeff Teeter said earlier, do the war games. You got to get out of the PG era. You got to be a minimum PG thirteen and do a right. little bit of blood. It's got to be a little bit of blood. If you don't have blood in the war games match, it was not a war games. It was just another cage match with two rings, and that's it. Yep. So don't don't make it a joke. That's all I say if you do it. It's a WWE. It's going to be a joke. Well, they better not, because that's my favorite match of all time. My favorite stipulation match of all time was the war games when you had, and my favorite war games was the last one they had and that was uh, I want to say it was um, it was the Dangerous Alliance Paul Dangerous Dangerous Alliance and um, it was them versus um, Sting's group Sting, Nikita Koloff, Ricky Steamboat Barry, uh, uh, Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham I believe and it was a great great match if you haven't if you don't remember it or you don't ever think you've ever watched it it's on wwe network if anybody wants to watch it there go to youtube look it up there it was flat out awesome and yes there was blood there was plenty of blood there was always blood at war games yeah well there was no lack of blood in this one everybody bled in this one i think everybody bled everybody bled they all bled <laughs> it bled them dry anyway um 
Do you have anything else you want to cover this week before we go? Uh, New Day Rocks. Well, we know New Day Rocks. Matter of fact, I was going to let you uh, lead us out here in a minute like you usually do. But other than the New Day, do you have anything that you want to touch on before we do leave? Other than the usual? No. All right. Well, in that case, everybody, don't forget to visit the website. Uh, go there at http colon slash slash bodyslamthecompetition.com. You can catch all of our content. Blogs. All of our blogs, all of our content, yes, the blogs and the podcasts and everything there. Uh, you can sign up and receive the monthly newsletter from there as well. There are links at the top to our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. Make sure you go there. This will be on YouTube, obviously. We want you to come there. We want you to like the videos. We want you to share the videos. We want you to comment and participate. That's the best part about it. It's the most fun. When you guys talk with us, that makes it all worthwhile. In the meantime... Mike, uh, I know you want to do it, so carry us out if you will, and everybody will see you next week. New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. And we got the trombone. That's what I wanted to hear. All right, right. everybody, have a good day. Mike, we'll catch you next week. All right, next week, guys. Bye.